Hey guys, welcome back to the Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast. Today I'm joined by Steph. So Steph is a good friend of mine. We've communicated for a little bit of time here. I think we connected on Instagram a few years ago and we've chatted on and off. And she's also a huge part of the Discord channel, um, the UA Academy. So it is an honor to have her on. She's going to tell us some stories about some martial arts and stuff like that. Thank you for being here, Steph. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you for inviting me. This is going to be fun. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm happy to have you. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself to kind of get us kicked off here? Uh, sure. Um, I'm Steph. Uh, I work at a pediatric office. I do medical records, a lot of pushing paper, but I like it. Um, <laughs> I'm a mom, boy mom. Um, what else do I do? I do that in the daytime. By night, I am a martial arts instructor, um, self-defense instructor. Um, it's what we primarily do at our dojo. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting, actually. I wasn't aware that what you did was uh, self-defense and not just martial arts. I've done some like kickboxing and some stuff like that, um, but it's all kind of just been for like fun. It's never really been um, centered around some of the actual like defending yourself type stuff, but more of the actual like learning the techniques and the arts. So that's uh, really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. How old are your kids? I didn't realize you, you had kids actually. <laughs> oh my God. People can't believe how old they are sometimes. I have one that just turned 16, mm -hmm. one that is 13 and one is 12. <laughs> and are they huge anime fans as well? Oh my goodness. Yes. I have one. It's going to be the future Hokage. He says, I have Deku, the number one hero, and then my uh, little Tokyo ghoul over there because he likes that one a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, uh, I empathize with all of them. I'm a huge Naruto, <laughs> my hero, and Tokyo ghoul fan. They, they have good taste. Their, their mom has taught them well. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. Now, what got you into martial arts, Steph? Martial arts? Oh, gosh. So yeah, um, a while back, I was in a really bad, toxic, abusive relationship. My mom, my brother was already doing lessons. He's younger than me. He was already at the dojo. My mom is a big part of it. It's, it's our second family, you know? I love them so much. Uh, she started putting me into seminars after I left that relationship and eventually uh, started paying for me to take classes. Um, so a lot of that self-defense was why it's centered around self-defense is because of that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I mean, and I'm sure that that felt really empowering as much as it also felt like really good to just get up and active. It probably felt good that like to be in that vulnerable place that you would have been in where, you know, you're putting yourself out there, but then being taken advantage of and being the way of like being in a really abusive relationship and then kind of taking some of that power back through movement and through protecting yourself through self-defense. That's a really amazing story. And so something similar got me into fitness, not specifically martial arts, but after I got out of an abusive relationship, I started to kind of dive into fitness and it's what really helped me pull myself out of that dark mental place, bring myself to a better place from a mental health standpoint. And that's what brought me into training. So I would assume you've kind of been on a similar journey as far as, you know, taking back some power into your own life through martial arts and then eventually, you know, becoming so passionate about them, you know, through that, that you've decided to now go on and instruct. Was there, uh, you know, is that kind of some of the reasoning behind getting into instructing or what was some of your reasoning for moving into just practicing um, martial arts into, um, you know, instructing martial arts? Um, so it was a, a lot of little things, uh, not just because of what I went through. Um, a lot of people at the dojo, um, they come into it because of a lot of these reasons. Um, kids that are bullied, women and men that had need to learn that self-defense. Um, and seeing that their stories were like mine, my sensei really pushed me up to teaching because he really believed in my passion for it. He believed, uh, you know, in my skill. He believed that me helping other people would be something that I would enjoy. And it, it is, it is a lot. That's amazing. That's so cool that you've been able to move and, you know, take your passion and bring it into teaching. Um, and what exactly martial arts do you practice? I do know that you practice kind of a few of them, but what specific martial arts do you practice? Um, 
So my main one that I do is the well, so the one that I um, help instruct in is the Alpha Krav Maga International. There's also a worldwide. Um, so, but the one that I do is a Kimi International. Um, we do that through under Sam Sade. He's the founder of this particular one. Um, I've also joined into House and Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Uh, that one go hand in hand with the Krav. Um, a lot of Gracie is used in the Krav Maga. Uh, my sensei is always pushing me towards learning more arts. And we started with that one and continuing. Um, other stuff that I do there is Malaya Screma, which is a Filipino martial art. Uh, a lot of weapon stuff. If you ever see people using like the sticks and um, that uh, has a lot to do with it. And um, I've dabbled in Kitsurugu Jiu Jitsu, which is a Japanese Jiu Jitsu. That one is mostly feet based. Uh, it's a lot of throws. Uh, I really like that one. I need to get more in, involved in that one. <laughs> Um, Sensei also has his own Apache knife fighting system that's been adapted into Akimi. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really fun. Yeah, he, he got honored to do that, put together a system for it. Very cool. That's amazing. Do you have one of them that's your favorite? Um, you know, it would have to be the Krav because it's my baby. Um, that's where I started and I'll always have that passion for that one. <laughs> I love it. And what do you love most about like martial arts in general? in general, um, for myself, the confidence for one that it gave me, uh, if you knew me 10, 15 years ago, it would not have been the same person. You know, I couldn't make eye contact with people. I couldn't talk because of just everything that was going on in my life at that time. Um, always seeking like affirmation from people and this and that. Um, the martial arts helped me, like you said, with that confidence. And now I walk with that confidence and you know my chin will never drop again that's so amazing and i love hearing stories like that because that's a very similar story to mine and that's why i'm so passionate about fitness and you know teaching fitness to people is because it's one of those things that you know no matter what type of fitness it might be whether it be martial arts powerlifting rock climbing whatever it is um, fitness and movement really help people kind of take their confidence mm -hmm. and kind of take their lives back. And it can have huge mental benefits as, you know, helping people come out of their shell. Um, for myself, you know, being social and connecting with people, is something I struggled with a long time. And um, fitness is something that helped me become more confident in myself. So I was able to, you know, put myself more out there and make more friends. And I've definitely done a much better job of them last year. And, you know, that's why you're sitting here with me. So, um, you know, I love hearing stories similar to mine in that way. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah now, love it. yeah, absolutely. Now, do you have a top self-defense tip for somebody that's maybe, you know, unsure about self-defense like could you maybe pass on some little bit of a knowledge is like what do you think is one thing that could help somebody be a little more aware or have a little bit better self-defense um you know every day if something was to happen to them mm -hmm. just oh some advice let me see as them coming into training or just like in general just in general, like if, you know, something was to happen to somebody, you know, on the street or something like that, like what, what type okay. of self-defense tip would you give somebody as like a number one thing? A number one thing would be, is what we, what we tell our students to just fight back. You know, a lot of the times an attacker doesn't like when you fight back, you start to hit, you start to do anything to try to get away more than likely you're going to get away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I think a lot of them think that people won't fight back. So mm -hmm. coming in under that assumption, you know, as soon as somebody starts to put up a little bit of a fight, I think a lot will end up backing off. So that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a good tip. Thank you for sharing that. Now, diving into the anime side a little bit. <laughs> what's, what's your favorite anime? My favorite anime right now is, is One Piece. Um, I have fallen in love with that anime. <laughs> That is quite the commitment. How many One Piece episodes are there now? Ooh, I think we are on the 960s already. <laughs> that is absolutely insane <laughs> that they are going to hit a thousand episodes. Like, and That's because Oda Sensei himself has already said that in the next five years, he wants to complete it. So can you imagine how many more episodes are going to be coming out in that next five years? 
<laughs> like that is so much content like i yeah uh, one piece is something i've never been able to get into myself and i spoke to you a little bit about this like you know off screen like i think it's a really cool concept i watched some like episodes here and there as a kid but i never really got the context of like what was going on so there's been a couple times where i've like tried to invest um and like tried to watch the start and i just can't do it like the the start is like really painful and slow the anime is animation is like really low quality because like it started like back in like the 90s or maybe the late 80s so like they can't really blame them for having like low quality (laughs) animation and that's just how the storytelling was there but i feel like if i don't have that like context of story to like go into it uh i i just can't do it but yeah. what what uh what what do you love about um what do you love about like one piece like what makes it your favorite anime what really drew you into it oh, for one the adventure um this whole thing with luffy and why he wants to become the pirate king is just so it's not to be a king you know it's for him to be just the freest person you know on the sea and that's just that's something like with everything with me with the martial arts and everything it's yeah I got it to be free you know it opened me up to a lot of stuff and the stories behind it and everything his relationships how he's able to get people to commit to him and be loyal to him so quickly just because how he's just willing to help people you know I love it that's awesome (laughs) and uh obviously that's uh that's you know, something that can be translated into your martial arts and into your life and a lesson you can kind of take away from that. Is there any other like lessons that you've taken away from anime and you've applied specifically into your martial arts? Um, yes, um, especially with My Hero Academia and uh, Naruto, mm-hmm. Rock Lee. Oh, I see with myself a lot in Rock Lee, okay? The perseverance is one thing. Um, right before I tested for my black belt, it took me longer than it would a regular person to test for my black belt because I didn't see any need at the time to advance until they told me you know why not just advance you're working towards it you know of course it's up to you to do it but when you're already there you're skilled why not take that leap and do it get your black belt just got my black belt last year (laughs) out of what is it like eight years of training um but the uh the perseverance from Rockley is one of the biggest things that helped me through a lot of that last six months of training before I tested. And, you know, Rock Lee is kind of an interesting character. Like I love, <laughs> I, I love a lot of Rock Lee's character. His design throws me off a little bit. I'm not sure if I can get behind the whole bushy brow, um, orange or uh, green jumpsuit with the orange leg warmers. <laughs> My favorite but, uh, is saying gear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any yet. I think if I do Rock Lee, I think it'll be the the um, like encounter shorts for sure. Um, I, I like the encounter you gotta shorts. Get the I, orange in there though. You got to get the orange. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'll buy you some. <laughs> I'll buy you some. I would say I'm just gonna have like the Rockley jogger show up to my door I'm like oh god now I gotta wear these <laughs> it'll be like how Guy Sensei like passed on the suit to Rock Lee. the, the exactly. whole suit is just gonna show up at my door one day it's not even gonna be the just same gear it's <laughs> just gonna be straight up the green jumper with the orange leg warmers <laughs> and the, yep and the belt <laughs> and the belt <laughs> amazing um but yeah like the, his perseverance and his character is like absolutely phenomenal and i definitely love his story i know like today um you had posted that like motivational rock lee clips um in the discord oh, yeah. channel I, I listened to those while i was like showering and getting ready for the day and I start, it started to bring like tears to my eyes. I'm a very sensitive person. So like anything will make me cry, but like definitely like when you watch like all of like Rock Lee's like heart touching scenes like that and just see him like constantly coming upon challenge after challenge and overcoming them through perseverance, 
Um, he, there's some really great messages that can be taken away from Rock Lee. Is Rock Lee your favorite anime character of all time or who's, who's your number one anime character? <laughs> He's one of my favorites, yes. Um, okay. But because when I started anime again and like it was what, two years ago when my kids sat me down to watch My Hero Academia, he said, you're going to like it, right? It's like superhero stuff. You like superheroes. You like Captain America. Mm-hmm. Tell me why I fell in love with All Might. All Might is my all-time favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yes. <laughs> what makes him your favorite? I guess just, for one, his personality, the way he believed in Deku, that he gave him that opportunity. He stays with him throughout everything, teaching him just going through it all with him. Um, just like every time I go to train, I just, I just want to make all my proud. <laughs> That's my mentality when I train. <laughs> Amazing. I love that so much. It's, uh, it's funny because I really like All Might too, but I really like All Might because I see a lot of the character of Deku within myself. When I watch Deku's oh, yeah. story, I relate a lot to his story of struggle mm-hmm. and perseverance and overcoming odds and just like pushing and trying his hardest and trying to be like technical and do all the things he does and his nerdiness is amazing but yes. it's uh <laughs> funny because everybody always comments like because I think I'm more of like a Deku and everybody's like bro you're you're all might I'm like I wouldn't know if I put that but I definitely <laughs> see like the uh teacher mentality because I do like teaching so I do like that I like that I see that (laughs) yeah I do like that element of it too so um even though he's an absolutely awful teacher which I should almost maybe take a little bit of offense (laughs) to but but he's always trying to positively uplift people and I can get down for that (laughs) message and ultimately that's what the podcast is all about is positively uplifting people and you know giving that them you know that I guess, uh, what does he call himself? Symbol of hope, the, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to be the symbol of hope in people's lives so that people can persevere on and go plus ultra and whatever endeavors they go through in their lives. Now, we kind of talked about the Just Saying community a little bit already. I know you're a big part of that community. When did you get your first piece of Just Saying gear? My first piece would have been a year ago. They were my Red Riot joggers. (laughs) Okay, your Red Riot joggers. I like it. What does the Just Saying community mean to you? Oh, it's one of the best communities I have come across. Like, I there's a couple of them that I that are my day ones. Like Nadia, oh, I love Nadia to pieces. She has been there with me from the beginning. Um, just how uplifting everybody is, how positive everybody is. You guys are just amazing. I never feel out of place or awkward when posting any of my stuff, even though that's how I always feel about it. Um, Halloween last year, I remember posting something. It was to a close friend uh, story that uh, they had made fun of in my gear for Halloween. So mm-hmm. upset about it, didn't want to wear it anymore. And was just outpouring with love and support. That's just the kind of people that we need, you know? Yeah. Sorry, you froze for just a second there. Do you oh. want to repeat that point? Um, you got made fun of at Halloween. You didn't want to wear your gear anymore. And then. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I posted it to a um, a, a close friend story. Uh, then just like the outpouring support that came through with it, just like you shouldn't care about what they think. You know, um, if you feel confident in it, you look amazing in it. It's just it's just the kind of support that everybody needs, you know. Well, and I, I, I agree because that support is so important because in mm-hmm. reality, like people should not be commenting on like other people's like, let people wear what they want to wear, let them look how they want to look, let them do what they want to do. Like it's your life. You get to do whatever you want to do with it. But people, you know, usually take it upon themselves to project their own insecurities onto mm-hmm. other people's lives, um, which is unfortunate, but it's probably not going to stop happening which really, really sucks. But at the end of the day, having a strong community support system around you can help you overcome some of those challenges and persevere through them. You know, Rock Lee wears his uh, funny gear. 
um, all the time. And he feels amazing in it because he's always got guy sensei at his back. And, um, you know, that's really what it comes down to is you have people that when you fall, they're there to pick you back up. And that's what I really love about the just saying community is where there's constantly people around you like that. Everybody's just there to support each other. They don't care, you know, what discipline of fitness you practice. They don't care. Even if you don't do fitness at all, they don't even really care if you wear the just saying gear or not, although (laughs) it's strongly encouraged because we all love it so much. Um, But, you know, it's just about a community of people uplifting each other and having each other's back. So that's really what I like about the just saying community. And I appreciate anybody who's part of that, anybody who's putting positive energy into that um, as part of it myself. Now, what is, what do you think is the best life lesson and the best fitness lesson that you've taken away from anime and you've applied to your own life and your own fitness? That I've applied to it, it's still just a lesson of having that perseverance and confidence mm-hmm. yeah, that perseverance has a lot to do with um with my fitness journey and my life journey having confidence also um mm-hmm. i wouldn't have taken opportunities for a better job and stuff like that if i hadn't you know yeah yeah that's so amazing i guess you know it's translated out into your martial arts of you finally taking that black belt lesson and into other things of your life as well. So that's pretty cool. And that all came from your kids showing you my hero a few years ago, eh? (laughs) That's amazing. Those are some good kids you have there. Because the entire time, like there's a drill during the black belt test. Okay, because a few days before you take the, I guess the skill part of the test, just to know that you know your stuff. To pass Mm -hmm. that, of course. When you get to your black belt test, it was the most important part of it because then they're going to test your heart and your soul about it. They're going to test how you overcome yourself. When I tell you that day was emotional, that was an emotional day. <laughs> um, one drill you have to put on a song, it's called Sharks. They put you out into the middle of the floor and it starts with two people coming at you, at you and you have to stack them up, defend, push them away until it gets to, depending on how many black belts are on the board for you that day, can get up to about 10 to 15 people attacking you at one time Mm -hmm. (laughs) my two songs make my story for it's the english version for my hero academia and peace sign (laughs) yes (laughs) everything circled around my hero academia that day Mm -hmm. the guys too they knew how much i loved um the show and a couple of them were anime fans as well Mm -hmm. Um, the last last thing that you have to do for your black belt test is a three-on-one sparring match Mm -hmm. me and I am this five, two, <laughs> tiny, just I'm short up against these three, six foot something guys. They're buff. They come in at me <laughs> the entire mm-hmm. time. They're punching at me and everything. You know, one of them like, are you going to let um, everything that you train for go plus ultra? What would all might say? I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> they're really um, pushing that on me. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. That sounds like a very, you know, supportive community and family you have there at the dojo. That's awesome. My my sensei, I always tell him he's my mic guy. (laughs) I love it. He's my height man. (laughs) Love it. Love it. And yeah, I always tell, tell people that I think my hero is like the best intro anime to get somebody into the world of anime. And once they're in that world, they're definitely hooked. So like I just keep shelling out anime after anime now like I just what is uh what is 3d shows again you know (laughs) (laughs) oh man (laughs) I don't even remember what a 3d show is I watched one four score and three years ago something like that (laughs) amazing do you have any uh recent animes that you watch that you would suggest to the audience before we kind of close up here um recent stuff what did what have I started I started watching Slice of Life, so I don't know if anybody would like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, throw up some Slice of Life. Who, who knows what somebody will like or not? <laughs> well, one that I started to really like because I got helped me get my sister in to start watching was uh, Love is Hard for Otaku. If you like that, the little gamer girl, she reminds me of me, so. <laughs> I love it. She's I awkward. love it. I love it. What Amazing. else? Oh, oh. <laughs> Overlord is another great one that I like. If you like those RPG type of ones, um, where it's submerged into that game world and they're thinking on their own and stuff like that now. Uh, Fire Force is one that I started. I really love that one. I started Fairy Tale. 
Mm, what else? What else? Haiku. Oh, haiku is another great one that I just love for all of that energy. <laughs> yes, yeah, so many good ones out there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Steph. Um, can you tell the people where they can find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm nerdyfit2019. <laughs> awesome guys go give Steph a follow hype her up in her rock league gear even though it's got the funny orange parts at the bottom that I refuse to wear everybody says I look great in it stay in that way <laughs> <laughs> like I said I'll, I'll do the shorts I'll do the shorts <laughs> I love rock league I'm not sure if I want orange around my ankles <laughs> uh, uh, I'll put you onto it you'll see you'll see <laughs> A couple well, of months. Well, Give me a couple of months. You're going to be wearing it. We'll, we'll keep working on that. We'll okay. keep working. On that. You guys can find me on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook at Max Hall Fitness. Follow the podcast on Instagram at the Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast. If you guys are on YouTube and you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, leave a like and a comment on this video. Um, you know, it helps in spreading the podcast out to more people. This last month was a record month for the podcast. So I thank you guys again for that. I'll never be able to stop thanking you guys. But, you know, those likes, those comments, those subscribes go in a really long way to the YouTube algorithm, showing this to more people organically and spreading the podcast and allowing my message to reach more people, which is ultimately my goal is to help influence and um, inspire as many people as, as possible with this podcast. If you guys are on Spotify or iTunes, please leave a review, ideally a five-star review because you think I'm amazing. But uh, if you think I'm absolutely just trash, I guess a one-star review will do as well or anything in between, but leave a review, leave me some feedback. Either way, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for taking your time to listen to the podcast and have a plus ultra day. Peace out, guys.